so welcome to the Autotest V2 launch event. For more than a year, our team has worked on a new version of Autotest, uh, which is our automatic grading platform for coding assignments. Um, and today I am proud to announce uh, the new version to officially launch this to our customers. So Autotest V2 uh, is a complete redesign of our auto grader from the ground up which means it runs on a completely new and highly scalable infrastructure on a new and extremely powerful cloud environment that's all reliably hosted by our partner AWS. And then in addition to that, Autotest V2 boasts a new student and teacher interface. Um, we've simplified the, uh, the interface for students uh, so they can focus on the task at hand. And then for teachers, we have created an extremely versatile and powerful UI to easily set up automatic graders. Uh, whether you teach introduction to programming to the most advanced courses, Autotest V2 will be able to automatically grade it. So let's start with the student interface. We have designed the student interface to be sleek and simple, which means that students simply see the test that the teacher has created and to which rubric these tests might belong. Um, then students see if the test passes or fails and how many points they got. And they can simply click on any test within this interface to see the details. Why did it pass? Why did it fail? Autotest V2 also comes with a very exciting new feature, which is that you can designate certain tests to run inside the editor. This allows students to code within CodeGrade's environment and then instantly compile and run their codes to see if it does what they expect it to do. And you can even run all the other tests right inside the editor as well. This is also a great feature uh, to be embedded with your learning management system. Uh, here you can see it with Canvas, but of course this also works with any other learning management system that CodeGrade supports. And this really transforms your LMS into an IDE and auto grader for code. And what sort of powers this code execution and also being able to run tests within the editor is the radically decreased startup time for Autotest V2. Within Autotest V2, the startup time is less than a second. Um, so that means that as soon as students press that button, it runs instantly and they can see the results. Let's take a quick step back uh, and let me tell you about sort of the design philosophy of why we created this new version. Uh, and really, this is sort of fueled by all the feedback uh, we've gotten over the past few years. To a lot of these more advanced questions, but also simple questions, often we had to say no. Um, but today, I'm quite proud to announce that we have a different answer to all of these questions. And that answer basically is yes, we can support this in Autotest V2. And there's basically two reasons for that. Uh, first of all, it's a completely new teacher interface. And the second part of that is the fastest and most powerful auto grading infrastructure that we built. So let's take a look at that teacher interface then as well. We completely redesigned this as well. And basically, how you can create tests now is by using a versatile block-based interface, making it very easy for both beginners and advanced users to create their auto test configurations. And with this new version, adding tests and testing if those tests work correctly has never been faster and easier. But to really see how easy it is to create a configuration auto test v2. I'm going to get rid of the slides now and demonstrate it from the teacher perspective. So you should be able to see my Canvas interface right now. Again, you can also use this in standalone or in any other LMS. Um, but I want to show you how easy it is to create a completely new, simple Java assignment within Canvas using CodeGrade. Um, so I'm just going to press this press assignment button, and I'm going to call this Java Fibonacci. Um, I'm going to press the Find button, and I'm going to add the code grade assignment. And I'm going to say it loads in a new tab. I'm going to set my due date in Canvas, and I'm going to press Save. This creates my code grade assignment, and let's start setting this up now. So let's get started by pressing the Settings button. Also, something I want to do here is actually turn on the editor, uh, because we're going to um, use the editor here and then I can simply drag and drop this starter code in here in the template and submit this. So this is the starter code for the students, so great. 
Next thing I want to do is create my rubric. I want to make this a graded assignment. So I'm going to simply create a new rubric. This is all the setup we have to do. And now we can start on setting up the auto grader. So we go to this auto test tab. And once you have access to auto test V2, you are able to select it. Again, you can now create or copy an existing assignment. For this one, I'm going to create a new one. And here you can see our new interface showing up. On the top here, there's three different tabs. First, the setup. This is comparable to what in Autotest V2 was your setup. You can install stuff, um, install versions of your software, run any setup scripts, upload any files you might need in the auto grader. But Java is pre-installed, so I don't have to do anything here. So now I'm going under the tests, and this is where I can actually create the tests. And the first thing I want to do in Java is actually compile the student's code. So I'm going here, and I'm going to select this script in which I can write a best script and just run anything. So I'm going to call this compile code. And then here, I'm going to run Java compile on any Java file the student hands in. So this will be their Fibonacci.java. And to check if this works on my solution, I can press this build snapshot button. Now I get prompted to upload my solution file to continue. Let me open this up. So the Fibonacci.java, uh, which is the solution, upload it. And what will happen now is it will run the setup. We haven't done anything here, so it will start up automatically. And then it will actually run the test on your submission. So you can see the compile code, no output, run successfully. So great, this test works. Now I can either choose to publish this to students or simply continue setting up. So I'm going to continue setting this up. I want to run my actual script. So I'm going to use that new feature that allows me to run code in the editor. So I'm going to create a run only in block, and I'm going to say editor. And then I'm going to drag and drop a script in here where we say run your code. I don't want this to run actually in the submission overview. I just want to run this in the editor. Um, and here we're going to run Java Fibonacci. And actually, in this case, I want to actually give some input to this program. So I'm going to give some input to this program. Next, we can, of course, build this and then see how it looks from the student perspective. But actually, let's create some tests that after students hand in, um, they can run. So I'm going to say run only in submission. And then I'm actually going to wrap this in a connect rubric block. So I'm going to automatically fill in my dust your code to run successfully rubric. And I'm going to do that with an IO test. Again, I just drag and drop it in. And then I can run an IO test. So I can say here Java Fibonacci. So I'm running the program. But you see, this is also a block where I have to drag and drop steps in here. And you can see we can do this by using these match blocks. So I'm actually going to drag and drop a substring match in here. And I'm going to give some input to the program. Uh, so let's say 10 numbers. And then I have to expect some outputs. So to get that, let's just build my snapshot. It should compile the code. Again, you see it runs instantly. And I get my output here. So I can just copy paste this in here. The cool thing about this new design philosophy is that it's very easy from our side to add new blocks to this to give you more functionality quickly. So you see now within the IO test, we might have the full match and the substring right now. Um, things you can expect soon are things like regular expressions or maybe other types of matching um, or maybe a block where we can automatically generate the expected output from your solution file again i'm going to test my code so i'm just going to press that button see it compiles this works correctly so let's add another case in this case i can just duplicate this one and let's do 20 numbers build it wait for it to run which it does very fast Another cool thing you see here, by the way, is that it's actually um, automatically streaming the output in. So if students have a lot of output, they don't have to wait before the full test completes, but they can just see it live. So again, I can just copy paste this in, press build, and maybe this is a very simple test that I'm ready for students to start using. So this works. Great. So I'm now going to just simply publish this to students. And now it automatically runs on all previous submissions. And as soon as students start using it, it will run on their code. So let's go to the student perspective then and go to the student's view. And then let's load it. 
So right here, I can create a submission, open up the editor, start from a template. And we see here, we start with a Fibonacci.java. And I have this run button that I can press. And as you can see, it will start compiling the code, no output, and running the code, no output. Um, so the, it runs successfully. So if I have a syntax error, my compile code should fail. And I see an error here. So I probably have to fix it. And now as a student, I can start basically creating my assignment. So I might you know, start out with uh, just a, all right, and then just run this. And it works, and we get five numbers. So now as a student, I can simply press this hand in button. And on the auto test tab, it will start running the code and running the tests, after which I'm done. So this is a great example of how, in a couple minutes, I'm able to set up a very simple assignment. So let's have a look at a more difficult or more full-on setup assignment. So again, from the student perspective, I've set up this uh, Python Fibonacci assignment. So it's the same kind of assignment, but a different language. Um, and I'm going to resume a session here. Um, and here, I've started working on a Fibonacci assignment. So let's run this. And as you can see, it, it runs it. Let me actually just go to the hand-in overview so you can see what kind of tests are actually working. Um, so again, you see we have these instant functionality checks right here. Um, and they work. So we have implemented it correctly. Uh, but then, as you can see, we, we we input some strings, and then actually the, the program crashes. So I'm not handling string out input correctly yet. And then another cool test you see here is we check if students have implemented it recursively, because we don't want them to do that. Um, they have to use a while loop in this case. And we use some code structure tests. Um, and you can see the student fails this. And then finally, we run some unit tests on here as well. Um, and as you can see, we have not implemented quite correctly. So as a student, I can just go back and edit this. Uh, and then the first thing I want to do is, is maybe throw it, try and accept around this block to make sure that we don't crash uh, on uh, when it's trying to pass it. So value error. Uh, and then maybe print you should input a number. So again, we can try run this. Um, so here you can see this works now. So we can hand this part in, and then we should uh, pass our test. Um, great. So we still fill those tests. So we want to, you know, uh, do a do a while implementation here. But as a student, I can get this feedback real quick. As you can see, we chose here to only have these tests after students can hand in. Uh, but if we want, we can also bring these into the editor as well. Also, something really cool that you see here. Um, is the use of hide blocks. So with this particular test that doing a structure check, we hide the configuration always. But something that we got a request for very often uh, is, can I hide this before the deadline? Can I hide this after the deadline? So let's say we want to hide the output of this before the deadline. I can simply do that. Maybe I want to hide the result always. I can just put this in another block, and I can say hide result always making it very sort of versatile to create different kinds of configuration with different kinds of requirements. Um, so this was a quick showcase of the teacher interface. Um, I want to go back to the slides real quick to talk a bit more about performance and release. So quickly about the performance of Autotest V2. A big difference compared to the other version is students now, by default, have access to 4 gigabytes of RAM instead of 1. Um, and they have access to one core. But the nice thing about this new infrastructure is that we can increase this for customers if we, if, if, if they need. Um, also, of course, we have that startup time of less than one second. It's highly scalable, and we're doing full virtualization. Uh, so that also means you can run things like Docker within Autotest. Finally, what is available now at the moment of this launch, uh, the following test types. Uh, are available. So you can run any script. Um, you can do I.O. testing, input-output testing. You can do code structure testing through an I.O. test wrapper that we can provide for you, and that's available in our help center. 
you can JUnit and you can do JUnit and PyTest testing, and you can do custom tests. Again, as I said, uh, with this new design philosophy of Audit Test V2, it's it's very easy uh, for us to extend it. Talk quickly about sort of the release schedule. Um, with this launch, we have opt-in available now. Um, so on our help center, and there's a small little form you can fill in, uh, and then we will turn on Audit Test V2 for you, and we can give you onboarding in it as well. And then throughout sort of the next months, we will add new blocks and uh, functionality continuously with the goal that Audit Test V2 will replace V1 in summer of 2023. Of course, all of your old configurations will be compatible with V2. Um, so that's something to look forward to as well.